everyone, I'm Richie, and welcome to Helix Cloud Games, and this is SideQuest, a show where we take a step off the critical path and explore more what the video game world has to offer. On this week's show, I'm joined by the host of Sounds of Stady podcast, Mr. Chris. Hey, SideQuestian people. SideQuestian people, they're like equestrians, it's like... They're like pe- horses. They're like the people cloud. on horses, but off to the side. They're going side saddle. <laughs> side questions. <laughs> um, but on this week, we're going to be talking about is it time for Google to upgrade Stadia servers? But first, a quick bit of housekeeping. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon for notification when all of our great content goes live, such as the Sound Stadia podcast, which goes live every single Monday on YouTube and podcast services. Our first night live streams were, at the time of recording, most recently, we had a blast playing Riders Republic. Mm. And if you want to join the conversation even further, you can by joining by finding a link in the description to join our Discord where you can write in topic ideas for this very show. Um, so, the new, what's brought this topic on, Chris, is that um, GeForce Now have announced that they are upgrading their GPUs to to run with their RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti's, which are the newest, basically, the newest brands of the NVIDIA GPUs. They're not the top tier ones, they use a 3090, but basically, if put it this way, a thirty eighty, if you can get yourself a hands on a, a, a thirty eighty, you're probably looking to drop four di- a four figure sum. It's like you, it, it, it's good shit. It's shit. <laughs> I was going to say it's shit. Yeah. Yeah. To put it in it's layman's like, terms, G-Force. this is it's it's apart from like thirty ninety is ridiculous in terms of quality. 3080 is kind of where I think most top tier PC gamers would ideally like. Right. So yeah. So it, to, yes, to take it in a, in a nutshell, yeah, Nvidia announced by the end of the year they will be dropping RTX 3080 gaming pods in the cloud, which will and a quote from their their own Twitter page as well is the most powerful gaming supercomputer ever built to stream PC games from likely. Steam and Epic, Windows Store to Mac, iOS, Android, and Android devices now. Yes. Huge moment for game so. streaming in the cloud. And we also know that uh, Microsoft have announced that they're upgrading xCloud, or whatever they're calling it now, Xbox in the cloud, to use Series X hardware. However, I want before we go into things a bit further, I want to put a bit of a caveat on that particular topic, because while I was looking for information... The only information I could find about it is quotes saying they're going to use Series X hardware. So any stats or fa- figures or anything we quote off are going to be for the Series X. But it's a f- very good assumption that you will not get 100% of the performance of a Series X if you're using xCloud because of the extra processing required. Complexion that is just one of the it's one of the natures of cloud gaming and it stands for all platforms where mm-hmm. most of the ones you have it we're using dedicated this is our hardware for this the same thing for rtx 3080 and rtx 3080 in your gaming pc you're going to see better performance out of than if you're using geforce now mm-hmm. and the first one i can do say um, prove that point is the max mes- maximum resolution for geforce now they've up from 1080p to 1440p or 2k where others are quoting 4k which i actually think this is more realistic personally Okay. They're being more realistic with what they're quoting. So, in a nutshell, then it's a big moment for cloud gaming. It's it's more power in the cloud and uh, GeForce Now. Again, we've said on this on this show and the the main podcast many times that GeForce is a great utility tool. It's if you've got an existing library or you buy you buy your games elsewhere. It's a fantastic way to play them at the most optimum without the need of dropping hundreds thousands of pounds for a dedicated gaming PC setup essentially. It's it's the same promise Stadia and Luna give you, but with access to your existing library or more yes. storefronts at your disposal. And um, we should caveat this again, another just more caveats all over the place. Um, this new top of the range GeForce NVIDIA thing, it is behind a, a higher paywall as well. It, I'm is, right it is, yeah. How much are we talking? Um, we're talking, I think it's about $200 a year. For the are they doing an annual subscription, are they? I'm not sure if they're doing it annually, but I think that's how much it took. According to 95 Google, that's what it comes to. Okay. So you do pay more for the priority. All right, okay, yeah, I can see that. So they've still got the free model, of course. You wait in the queue. You get your dedicated time slot. Yeah. There's the priority model, and then, yeah, RTX 3080 yep. is currently down as $99.99. 
uh, for six for a six month commitment. Now, there's one thing when we're talking about GeForce Now that anytime we talk about GeForce Now, I have to bring this up because for me it is a bit of a deal breaker. The priority model, which is a premium service, isn't a guaranteed model. You are limited to six hours game sessions and priority access, which can mean you don't get access. And this is why I've never really bothered with GeForce Now and still won't. For me, a premium service, if I'm paying money every single month for the service, I want access to the service when I want access to the service. That Not for me is by far, yeah. That for me is by far the biggest downside of GeForce now, and potentially on the only downside. Yeah, um, we know a lot of people who use it who anecdotally mm-hmm. say it's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, again, it's this, it's the same premise that Stadia and Luna and XCloud offer, just without the dedicated kind of infrastructure, yeah. because you're just using existing stuff via a cloud um, PC. I've always said GeForce now, it's a utility. It's a bloody good one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got a lot of time for it. It just needs to drop that. Then two caveats, stop limiting my game session length and get, let, give me guaranteed access for the premium services. So that's priority and the new RTX 3080 versions. For the free service, I have no problems putting restrictions on that. Mm-hmm. It's free. Yeah, it's free. Like, I can't, you can't free. complain. You can't, can't ask for more. Yeah. So... To bring to bring this back around, rather than just divulging on GeForce now and, and XCloud yeah. and stuff for so long, Stadia, Richie. Yes. Google Stadia. As far as we're aware, it's using the same hardware as it was from launch in 2019. And the reason we bring up the question of do we need to see a Stadia 2.0 or an upgrade or something well, is because the competition are making proactive moves to be better. And the reality is, technology does not wait for anybody. It's always evolving. It's always improving. Here we are on the cusp of Stadia's second year anniversary. And I know the audience out there is starting to get the itchy itchy feeling that the tech is starting to get left behind a little bit. Yeah. Ray tracing, next-gen features, are they going to be withheld because there's no reinvestment? And we know John Justice, before he left, came out and said, we'll always be making improvements in the back end. We just won't tell you about that stuff. Your Which competition are actively idea. coming out and telling us about this stuff now. Yeah. You so can't is, just bury your head in the sand and hope that things keep I'm, ticking over nicely. We know that we actually know they have been making improvements, but all the improvements seem to be on the software end, not the hardware end. So where I've I've previously and I still kind of hold to it, say that there isn't going to be a dedicated Stadia 2.0. What they'll do is they'll upgrade a stick of RAM here, they'll upgrade the CPU there, they'll stick a new GP in, GPU in, and they probably won't really tell you about it. What they'll t- tell you about is the real-world applications for it. So if it has an increase to the max resolution, you'll hear mm-hmm. about it. If there's an increase to the fr- frame rate, you'll hear about it. If they decide to do like an, a Stadia Pro Premium, yeah. you'll hear about it. Um, but I think when we talk about Stadia, I think one of the things we need to talk about is... They're currently offering with Stadia Pro up to 4K, 60 frames per second. They don't usually hit that. The developers don't usually hit that. The games coming to the platform are usually not 4K, 60 frames per second. Mm-hmm. I personally, I, I struggle to think that with the power of the hardware, from how I understand it, that the platform isn't capable of it. I agree there's a that. problem. There's yeah. a if, problem there. If we look at the recent titles, yeah. like Far Cry Six, the Riders Republic trial that we recently tried out this past week, yeah. yeah, thirty frames seems to be the the standard at the moment. Which then, yeah. yes, it does beg the question: Why am I paying for Pro? Because it ain't for the the cheap games that come out there, and the one yeah. or two good ones that drop. All all the titles usually. However, yeah, why would you pay for this premium subscription if nearly every title that's coming isn't achieving and we've had that f- benchmark? There's a few examples that as well come to mind. That fe- well, most recent we had Valhalla got patched so it can run at 60 yeah, frames yeah. per second, True. which shows that it's not a hardware issue, that's a software issue. Mm-hmm. So that comes to Stadia, we're back to quality control. I was and just going to Arc- say, yeah. Yeah. 
Ah, um, our friend Gem and people on Reddit were able to use the console to adjust the, adjust the settings manually to massively improve the performance. I did it as well. Yeah, yeah, but I Gem delved found in it. there. Not that I'm that. <laughs> I, did, I, I, I did it. Myself. I did it. I had to play as well, but I want to give credit to the people who find this stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm capable of that as well, although I'm not the techiest person. Yeah. These are the type of episodes which I'd love but, to get Tom involved. Yeah, they, to I, pull I him away from his child thing. and his family, and just be like Tom. Yeah. All of this gobbledygook, all the of this RTX of the numbers and megabits and frames and stuff. Yeah, tell us what it means. But yeah. from a from a total naive standpoint, I guess it's looking at the tech that GeForce now are talking about. And Nvidia, we know they're like. They, they know what they're doing when it comes to like chips yeah. chipset and everything like that and there is a chip shortage right now and we know yeah. Google's cloud are working on loads of stuff behind the scenes to to get away from like kind of the Intel the mass producers I think they're working with AMD and the cloud and new servers and, and part of this announcement from GeForce Now they came out and said they're also opening new data centers uh, Thirty, they have 30 currently data centers worldwide covering 80 countries they'll be opening 4 new data centers in the southern hemisphere uh, 1 in Singapore, Singapore 2 in Australia and the first data center in Brazil which goes back to a previous side quest where we spoke about expansion for Stadia in new countries and um, some of the requirements and we know companies like Amazon with the AWS network Google Cloud in general and uh, Microsoft and their entire Azure infrastructure these companies are expanding exponentially around the globe and getting into new areas new countries continents the, the future still hasn't reached us yet and we know cloud gaming is in its infancy but we were always told the power of the cloud was the ability to upgrade the hardware in the back end without anyone noticing seamlessly just upgrade it all and yeah we sit here paying for our 4k 60 frames per second for and all these titles it. and for not getting titles. it on, on for the most part and yet the competition is coming out and saying well we're just yeah. going to crank it up to the max with some RTX 3080 and Series X servers the, the thing is this move by GeForce now is a fantastic move because with the, you mentioned the global chip shortage that means the price of graphics cards is massively inflated they're getting scalped mm-hmm. left right and centre so people can't get their hands on them for reasonable prices and unfortunately it's just a situation for PC gamers where they're going to have to wait it out or somehow mm-hmm. develop lots of money GeForce now have offered us a, a temporary solution where they can go, you know what? You can play games with ray tracing on at 2K at 120 frames per second using our service while you wait to be able to afford a graphics card. And that's going to entice people in. And yeah. I think 2K is an absolute critical point there because I don't know how much you know this, Chris, but most game, PC gamers don't actually use 4K monitors. What? Because what is more important than maximum resolution is pixel density. So, for if you having more pixels isn't mm-hmm. always going to give you a significant improvement, which is why on a lot of times in the PC gaming space, two K is seen to be the optimum right now. Because one, you're not paying excess; it's it's diminishing returns. The more money to pay up to get the same quality at four K. Mm-hmm is often just not worth it in terms of both the graphics cards and the monitor and as far as i'm aware yeah again correct me if i'm wrong a 4k monitor less than a meter away from your face it's kind of defeating the objective right because you sat so close to the monitor to start with yeah pretty much Uh, most people most people can on a on a pc monitor sat at normal distance away from one can't really tell much difference between 2k and 4k which is why I think they've went, we're going to cap this at 2K, but we're going to get the frame rate up to 120, which is more noticeable. That makes sense. That makes sense. So yeah, they've been very, few... I think they've been very smart with these numbers. Yeah. And they've, they've put out a few couple of uh, graphics. And again, it's, it's all down to communication, like showing your audience and, what it's capable of. The last time we had this from Stadia was on the stage at the GDC. Half, when they yeah, showed yeah. when they showed the teraflops and the comparisons and at the time we watched that of course and said that's amazing the cloud is is outpacing the ps4 and this and the xbox one yeah we've now had nearly one whole year of next gen ps5 and series x geforce now are coming out we don't really know much about what luna has under the hood but it's still in beta no it's from what i can tell it's equivalent to an rtx 2080 which is effectively the last gen nvidia card so 
Right. Probably equivalent to what GeForce Now was putting out before this most re- recent update. Yeah. But it's interesting some of the stuff they put out. So with this, um, with their press like, kind of article such, um, they actually claim as well the RTX 3080 in the cloud can beat a Series X locally. Yeah. So the the click they've put out a graph that says Destiny 2 click to play latency, uh, click to pixel latency, I should say, sorry. Um, there's at 120 frames is 56 milliseconds. GeForce now at 60 frames is 81 milliseconds. And the Series X natively at 60 is 93. xCloud is 175. And then an Ultra HD laptop PC running at less than 30 is 200. So it's shown you the the responsiveness yeah. and the low latency of, of this in the cloud, so, which goes back to our conversation many, many times over how cloud is the future of gaming because getting your hands on consoles, console prices going up, and the next gen, PlayStation 6, whatever Xbox looks like next, that's going to be another half a decade away and cloud gaming and these servers and these blades and everything will have came along so, so far. Yeah. Why would you want to drop half a well, grand on something new when you can I, do it with what you've got? I, th- I always think that dedicated hardware, one for one, is always going to give you better performance than the cloud because the cloud's having to take some of that performance and use it to process algorithms which mm-hmm. drop that latency. Yeah. Um, where if you're using a 3080 in your PC, that's going to be faster than GeForce now, assuming other hardware is comparable. Mm-hmm. But I think graphics are at a point... Now, where they're so good, it I don't. It's why it's like I don't really see. I wouldn't really buy a fair, an RTX thirty eighty, even if I could afford one, which I can't, because it feels like wasted money. To be honest, I think GeForce Now is a smarter solution to get. You're not going to get quite as good, but it's good. But it's going to be good enough, and you're going to save over a thousand pounds, which is not. <laughs> which yeah, which so can spend on games. Yeah. I mean, there's other things. Actually, as a content creator, having an RTX um, 3080 could be useful, although we don't do any excessive editing really on any of our content. Um, but So there is other uses for it, but I think an RTX 3080 for my use case would be excessive. I'd mm-hmm. love to have one. But... <laughs> Wouldn't we all? Yeah. So, so to... NVIDIA, if you listen, send me one. So I'll to bring it all, all back around then, yeah. do, do and does Stadia... Google Stadia, of course, on the cusp of their second year anniversary, need to come out and play the same game that their competition is now playing? I think they do. So the I've, the five major cloud gaming services right now, as far as I can see them, are Stadia, GeForce Now, Luna, X, xCloud, or whatever they're calling it, and PS Now. Sony, God knows what's going on with PS now. They seem to be putting effort into it, but there's been no huge announcement. But that's not the focal point. Grand Theft Auto 3. Yeah. It's not the focal point of their business, though. Definitely not. So Sony kind of get a bit of a pass. Luna gets a pass because it's not out yet. You can only get it in the US. Mm -hmm. Um, So that, that is a big thing. I do think that is a huge thing that does allow Amazon to have a bit of a pass because it's a beta service. Um, xCloud have recently upgraded GeForce now are upgrading Stadia starting to look like it's lagging behind even if it's objectively not lagging behind or if it's not in any meaningful way lagging behind if they start getting like developers to actually put out 4K 60 frames per second parts of the games and not mm-hmm. a year later get upgraded to that yeah but it's the, a lot of this comes down to marketing the perception of the platforms. Like as I exactly. said, GeForce Now, the moves if you look into the moves like I have, you see some very interesting moves that they're targeting that I think they're clearly targeting that PC audience that can't get their hands on a thirty eighty right now or even a thirty seventy. They're giving a solution to yeah. similar quality gameplay without the money and the G- NVIDIA's hope will be like maybe these people go play, start playing on GeForce that while they wait to be able to afford it a graphics card yeah. inside they don't need one after all certainly and it, a lot of it is completely for, yeah. from my perspective down to the optics and the marketing yeah. and I actually think if we go back to episode one of the Sounds of Stadia podcast where before Stadia was even out you, you, myself, Tom, mm-hmm. we sat down and we compared the specifications of Stadia to what was currently on the market. And in yes. episode one, we broke down and compared it. In Stadia, when it came to teraflops and gigahertz and everything, it beat them. 
And on paper, you could put it in a, in a table, in a chart, side by side, and go, right, which of these particular platforms is better to a, a, a average person? And on paper, the bigger the number, unless it's latency, the better it looks. And at this moment in time, from just someone glancing through a, maybe a gaming magazine or reading a quick, art, quick article online or doing a quick Google search for the specifications of this product compared to this product, you are going to get numbers back that at this moment in time and by the end of the year are going to put Stadia near the bottom. Yeah, well, there's an interesting... That's not a good look. There's an interesting thing that I would love for someone a lot smarter and a lot um, better this stuff than me to kind of figure out and work out what is the equivalent performance. So, for example, the amount of teraflops. Stadia is listed as 10.7. Xbox, Xbox Series X natively is listed as 12 what is but we know some of that power is going to the algorithms to make sure that it runs smoothly over the net, over network connections that latency is dropped how much is that actually eating into the performance because google won't tell us they're never going to tell give you that information because if it turns out like you only actually get an equivalent of seven teraflops mm-hmm. that doesn't look great like so they're going to give they're only going to get they're going to push out numbers that make them look better um, so that's one thing I'd love to see. I don't know how possible that would be, to be honest. But um, I don't know. I do. I do think they need. Uh, I do think it's due for an upgrade. I really do. Do you think it would be more likely for their anniversary or the next GDC, next March time, to talk um, about this kind of thing? If they were to come out and talk about it, I think they need to talk about it sooner than later. I really do. You can go. Maybe you give a a consumer description of what the improvements around your birthday, and you have a more technical discussion at GDC. Hmm. But the thing is, I, I also mentioned how I think that a lot of games are getting ported to run at 1080p, 30 frames per second, or 4K, 10, 30 frames per second, to get mm-hmm. them on the platform with probably a bit of ease, and then getting patched later to improve the service. Yeah. If Stadia had better hardware, then ports would then probably become easier. So you might start seeing more games come out at 4K, 4K 60 right off the bat, because while you still are leaving a lot of performance on the table, it's easier for the developers to get that out of it, to get that performance. Yeah, you're not pushing the but hardware as, as much. There's other things that could the help. They have announced that they do new porting tools and stuff that could help improve it um, so these things that they are doing but they all seem to be software yeah but the, <laughs> the truth of the matter is at the end of the day the technology cannot stay stagnant the, the, the no. big promise of cloud gaming is that it was always evolve over time Yeah. and after the, two years the competition are doing it and they've Google lost their, don't, don't appear yeah they've lost their advantage they've lost their advantage I, they came out swinging. We're better than PS4. We're better than um, Xbox One. We didn't know uh, we were better than X Cloud at the time. GeForce Now yeah. on par. And then after the, like the last month's worth of cloud news, and now we've got PS5 and Series X, yeah. they are starting to lose pace. And you, that's not a good look from well, a technology industry. You need to be out there at the top, constantly updating. So, putting PS Now and Lunar aside, because PS Now is it's good. It's good service. Could be improved. Whatever. Luna is not out. So it's not accessible. If I had to go, give an honest go, which is the best value of money between Stadia, GeForce Now, and X Cloud, with the when they're fully updated, and also putting the caveat aside that I w- I'm not going to touch GeForce Now till they get rid of them restrictions. I think X Cloud is currently number one in cloud gaming, followed by GeForce Now, then Stadia. X Cloud wins out over GeForce Now because of Game Pass and the library that it brings. Yeah. Where uh, GeForce wanna... Now is arguably probably maybe performed better than X Cloud in terms of outright performance, but Stadia, I think they're now third in terms of the quality of the hardware. Mm-hmm. Potentially second, they might still be ahead of X Cloud in terms of quality of the hardware, but it's a lot is still getting left on the table in my opinion, and the third in terms of game li- available game library. Yeah. On on paper, yeah, I, I would I would agree with yeah. that. Um, performance so they've lost wise, their they've lost their advantage the game by being the first to market. 
And let's remember they've also had an entire two years with chip shortages and console shortages. So their competition yeah. haven't been able to get... I know PlayStation and Xbox have sold millions but, and millions, but people can't get their hands on them still. So you've missed that window. But we're talking you're about... Ahead, you, we, I, don't think, I think that's a bit of a moot point with the chip shortage stuff because we're talking about Google going to get games, Amazon going to get games, and Microsoft. They have relatively equivalent resources available to them to get what they need. I just thought of people switching yeah. generations. Like if you if you were in the market for the next gen thing, if you wanted to play Cyberpunk, for example, yeah. remember how bad that oh, yeah, there was. Oh yeah, there was an Xbox shortage. And was pulled from PS4. So yeah. with all the shortages about, if you wanted to play the best version of Cyberpunk without having to drop two grand on a decent PC, Stadia was your answer. You couldn't play it on Luna. And they got a spike in user base when Cyberpunk dropped in Stadia because it was it the be- at the time, outside of PC gaming with like, Modern graphics cards, yeah, yeah, and the like things like the thirty series um, Nvidia cards and the equivalent AMD were still in the process of being launched when Cyberpunk dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, Stadia was the best place to play. Yep, I think it, in rea- yeah. in reality though, for all of this, is that it, it goes back to what we've said time and time again, time and time again, as a business. With a consumer-facing division in an industry that's all about dates, upgrades, the, and marketing. The gaming industry, to... it, it lives on hype. Yeah. That's what it lives on. People getting I mean, excited. It's a hobby. I mean, it's yeah. Not, I... It's not a cool piece of tech to have that make your life a bit easier. It's a hobby. People want to be excited about their hobbies. Yeah. And just technology as a whole over our entire lifetimes, Richie, is gone, is grown. Yeah. tenfold over and over every technology industry mobiles tablets phones televisions gaming anything like that has the market has increased and expanded but every step of the journey they've had marketing beats promotions adverts conversation consumer events like what what we say e3 yeah games awards all these things and yet for some reason some reason still to this day stadia are just Lips are sealed, silent. They're not yeah. going to tell us about the hardware. They're not going to tell us about the games. They're not going to tell us it's, about the tech promotions until it's stealth dropped, and that isn't good enough. It's a t- it's a terrible strategy, and it makes it makes like people more and more cynic- cynical and mm-hmm. move away from the platform. When a move like what GeForce Now and XCloud have just have done recently gets people going, they're supporting this in a big way. Stadia's approach of silence, keep my cards close to my chest, and drop shadow drop stuff. It's a footnote in a, and like, in someone's blog articles, a gaming industry news. It's a footnote in the games com- coming out today section on IGN. If that, yeah. If that. I mean we I mean, we listen at... to some um, cross pla- cross platform podcasts where you almost sell- have a mini celebration when you hear the word Stadia mentioned without like a load of negative crap. I mean, look how much news articles have been kicked off just for the Arkham Knight demo coming soon. Yeah. Google is partnering with Stadia Tech. And in the articles, yeah, they break down like, oh, the the, the, frequent, the features, how you can play it. And I genuinely think it, it going out to white labeling could be a good move. But everything still comes back to the close, the Stadia Games Entertainment last February and throughout the entire rest of 2021. They've not said anything. It's, it's, they've not the came is- out with anything new. As much as we mourn about journalists overusing that, they don't really have anything else for context because Google aren't telling us anything. Yeah, there was nothing at GDC. There was nothing at the Google I.O. events. There was nothing at the latest Pixel Pass event. Um, we only hear from them about the negatives of people leaving or what? things getting closed. They, they're just they're so bad. If Stadia is if Stadia is end up in the Google graveyard, it's on Google's shoulders entirely. Because I think the ga- video game world would have accepted it. It's still probably still willing to accept it if Google start acknowledging that this isn't just a, it's not it's not a fucking doorbell. It's no one's getting excited for the new Ring doorbell. I've got. Um, one. Yeah, but doorbell. you went. It's like oh yeah, it's it's a cool piece of tech, but you're not getting excited for it. It's not a hobby. You're not sitting there spending hours playing with it. You have to spend a hundred hours. At... True, yeah, true, true, true. <laughs> yeah, someone will be, someone out there will be. Ding dong. <laughs> I, I, I think Google just don't really understand the gaming industry very well. Or if they do now, that well, 
Well, they got know. rid of everyone who did. Yeah. <laughs> All those experts with the ex- te- decades of experience in the industry, they let them go yeah. about their own thing now. Yeah. But the thing to is, not the... get too caught up in it, Richie, yeah. I think the, re- the reality is, because again, we, it's hard not to sound negative when the news that you're talking about is... Other platforms platform, doing better. Yeah, other platforms doing better. Doing more, improving, yeah. showcasing... The crux of it all is they're talking to their audience. Yeah. They're, pu- they're putting out publications that say, look what we're doing that's good. Look what we're doing that's better. Look where we're investing and in continuing to support this platform for the years to come. And our last update for the from the tech side was GDC 2019. It's nearly 2022 now, folks. Yeah. Two years, second year anniversary. And the, the latest story we had or the latest thing we got from their VP was an article saying we're closing our Fest Party Studios. Yeah. Nothing from all the other Google events throughout the course of the year, which again goes back to we need to see a connect or just some kind of sign of life other than a stealth drop, other than some outright games family kid titles on the platform. Just, yeah. That's, that's uh, what the, more can we say? Well, that's the thing. It's just like if you want people to be involved in your platform, you've got to give them a reason to, and you have to keep giving them reasons to. And dropping shadow dropping Peppa Pig in the blog article is not really cutting it. Yeah, which is no disrespect to Peppa Pig. That would no. be great. But every other platform right now is getting the Grand Theft Auto trilogy remastered. Yeah. In on I should point out, PlayStation Plus is getting GTA and Game Pass is getting San Andreas. We're getting yeah. Peppa Pig. And Arkham Knight, if you're an AT and T customer who doesn't use Stadia. In the United States, you get Arkham Knight at 1080p, 60 yeah. frames for free and through a click to play link. We should mention at the time of recording, we're recording this on the Saturday. We're expecting a blog post on the Tuesday, which we did theorize in the Sound Stadia podcast that came out on Monday that it, we may see Ar- the Arkham series come because Arkham Knight is reportedly running on Stadia Tech. And last week's blog post was pushed. So yeah. at the time of listening, we may have that news that Arkham Knight's coming. I really hope so. I really hope so. But uh, yeah, at the moment, Arkham Knight is running on that custom AMD 10.7 teraflops, that 2.7 hyper-threaded x86 CPU, Richie. As he reads off the stuff. I As he reads off the thing. <laughs> but could it be better? Could it be better if they just upgrade their tech behind the scenes? We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Anniversaries around the corner. We're less than a month away from the second birthday. Will we see... Yeah. Mr. Phil Harrison, will we get an update of some, some kind of sub- substance? Stadia 2.0, where you at? Yeah. But that's all we have time for this week. If you, I'd lo- love to know what you guys think of, does Stadia need upgrading? What, how, it compa- how you think it compares to the other services? We haven't even mentioned Nintendo at all, and they do ha- technically have a cloud gaming option. Yeah. Um, but yeah let us know let us know in the comments and while you're down down there if you haven't already liked the video subscribe to the channel hit that bell icon for notification when all our stuff goes live check out all other shows sound stadia podcast affairs night live streams chris went up in the shard that's an awesome an awesome video um join our discord so you can submit topics that you would like us to discuss in more detail in our discord server and with that i've been richie i have been chris thank you very much for watching quest completed Get those tariff